Mm-hmm. Okay, Great. let's go. All right, everyone. GM, GM. Kelly, me. Wherever you guys are. Always looking for a reason why. Blowing up my phone, get no reply. All right. I'm sorry, but I can't be telling lies. Why, why? Welcome to another episode of Web3 and Music with Bandwagon, where we want to really help fans and artists make sense of this space. And today, we are so honored to have a wonderful friend with us. Today, you heard his music right at the intro. That's an awesome track called Reason Why, and this is Sugar Shay in the house, man. How's it going? Yo, what's up, Bandwagon? What's up, everybody listening? This is Shiggy Shay, Shiggy Shay. <laughs> yeah, I like that. I like that. Yeah, man. Hey, Shiggy, we we go way back, man. Since I started Bandwagon, I think eleven years ago, man, you were already doing it, man. You were already rapping. You were already creating music. A long time, man. It's a long time. Yeah, I mean, we met a long time ago. Yeah, and I think you've been doing this since fourteen, right? Since uh, since I was fourteen, yes. But uh, I think. You know, really properly into the music industry, probably for like thirteen years now. Yeah, amazing, man, amazing. And and, and she got to me, right? You've always been uh, someone that's always pushing the envelope, and, and that's what I really personally respect you for. I think you've like you know Thank pioneered you, this really authentic brand of of Singaporean rap, and I think for our listeners, we really want to get a chance to share that with you. And uh, you even represented us at the White House. In Washington DC, right? <laughs> that was in uh twenty sixteen, yeah. Yeah, how how was that? That was uh interesting experience, you know, definitely um very eye opening for me because I you know, that was my first time to DC as well. And you know, going to the White House and all of that, that that was that was a really um great experience for me, lah. Very eye opening, yeah. Yeah. And I think to me you're also one of the most like forward thinking artists in Singapore. And uh, I remember during COVID, you know, that period where we were totally locked down. Uh, and suddenly I see this notification about Sugar Shea wearing a motion capture suit <laughs> going on in the metaverse before even the word metaverse was a thing. You were already doing it. And uh, just saw that gigantic Sugar Shea in a, like, a, <laughs> like bigger than the Marina Bay Sands, right? Right, 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 right. Yeah, that was that was uh, actually done in collaboration with uh, my very good friends from uh, Anomalous Studio. You know, shout out to Banky. Um, that was yeah. that was a really really fun thing to do, lah. That, that was, I guess, during the lockdown. You know, we were just trying to figure out how to present um, performances and music to an audience in in a different way. You know, so that was kind of an experiment in a way. Yeah. Yeah, but man, an experiment that looks so polished, man. I think that blew a lot of people. Thank you, man. Away. Yeah, just the quality, the the effort, the finesse. Yeah, and and it's it's such an honor, Sugar, to have you with us today. Man, it's my pleasure, man. Van wagon, baby. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. <laughs> so now something really special happened yesterday, and it's why we're having this interview. So I, I want to let you have the honor of, of breaking the news. Tell us more about what happened. Um, I dropped my NFT yesterday Woo! and, uh, that was my first ever NFT. So, yeah. so that was definitely, um, uh, a very special moment for myself and for my team as well. Um, and also a very, very, uh, uh, a steep learning curve <laughs> for all of us, <laughs> you know, for web tree and everything. So yeah, man, it's very, very, just still learning, man. This is a learning journey that I think we're all on, you know? Yeah. Yeah, and I think you, you know, you're really humble, but the thing is, this collection sold out in four minutes. Right, I mean, right. that's amazing, man. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, and man. I yeah, heard yeah. You, I, heard you, I heard you didn't even get one yourself. Yeah, I mean, I was, <laughs> uh, I was, I was, I was, I, was, I didn't, de- we, I did, definitely didn't expect it to be sold out in four minutes. You know, we were just thinking of like, uh, if, if people are really going to buy it and all that, but, but, um, it was it was pretty crazy and and uh i wanted to mint one for myself but before i could do that it was it was sold out already and um yeah i I think i think uh it really showed me a whole new world you know and and uh beyond music you know in 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 blockchain technology so that was that was really crazy for me yeah Mm. 
Yeah, and, and speaking of this sellout, right, do you have any like information? Do you think these are your existing fans or do you think they're like crypto natives or people who like are already a, using the platform? A huge majority of them are actually uh, people who like got to know me for the first time and they're buying it uh, basically on... You know, whether they got to know about me or know about my music or know about my art through the Twitter spaces that I've been on or the Discord channels that I've been on. Basically, the Web3 community, like a huge part of it is is from the Web3 community, like people who are collectors themselves mm -hmm. and people that just really like to collect art, whether it's like visual art or, mm -hmm. you know, video art or, or music art, you know, all sorts of art. And, and these are people from all over the world, like... Wow. Um, Italy, France, America, like places that I think previously my music, um, like, 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 like never had the opportunity to reach in web two. This mm -hmm. is like a whole different audience for me. And these are people that wow. like, that are like, you know, when, when, when they are, when they're, when they're buying your NFT, it's like they're investing into your career in a way, you know? And wow. It's like it's like a it's like a connection that you you both share, you know, and and, and it's a like think NFTs it, it's 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 a tool that allows artists to connect with their fans in ways that we previously could never imagine before. Yeah. Wow, that's amazing, man. So you're reaching out to this whole new community who are whole new be community new fans of Sugar Shay. Wow. In the metaverse, yeah, yeah it's it's crazy yeah, to man. me too. Yeah, it, it really yeah, is. Yeah, you know. Yeah, I totally get what you mean. So at Bandwagon, we started this thing called Pixel Party, which is a party in Decentraland. And what we noticed was that 66.7% of the people who came were people who heard of us for the first time and who were in Decentraland or looking for something to do. So I think it's amazing, right, that we've got this whole Web3 community from all around the world. And through being involved in this, whether through an NFT collection or metaverse show, we're able to like bring together new fans and, and form new friendships over Web3. Yeah, definitely, man. Like it, it, Web3 and, you know, the NFT tech blockchain technology has the ability to bring people from all over the world together in a way that social media couldn't do. Mm. Why do you say yeah. that? Why do you say it's something that social media couldn't do? Mm. I mean, social media is is one layer of connection. I mean, of course, it brought mm. us way better together than what Web One, you know, w was, <laughs> you know, or before yeah. before social media even existed. You know, mm -hmm. it provided the tools for artists to kind of get out there with YouTube and with like even Instagram, TikTok, and all of that. But for yep. Web Three, is like um, people have a chance to be a part of your journey, you know, mm -hmm. and, and really literally grow together with you, you know? And, um, I, I, I not to say like web two is bad. It's, it's just, this is just the evolution of, um, the, the web, web three, you know? And I think that it's just more opportunities and more chances for everyone. I feel. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Indeed, man. Amazing. And so right now we want to dive into, uh, the NFT that you released, you know, for people who are new to this. And I'm just going to pull up a screen share. Sure. Uh, space bars. Who, who thought of the name space bars? Uh, myself. Like I just, uh, cause it's like, you know, bars, r rappers with bars. Right. And then I'm in space. Mm -hmm. So space bars, <laughs> you know, <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice, nice. Yeah. Pretty simple. Yeah, and so, simple. um, what, what you've got is these three packs, right? Yeah. Which, um, are basically three different collections. Uh, yep. So you've got Far Out Floating, uh, Cosmic Cartwheels, and Stellar Swinging. No, what's the story behind these names? I think the names were just to describe what the, the 3D animation was about. You know, Far Out Floating is uh, the sugar avatar just in space, just kind of like hanging out. Cosmic mm -hmm. Cartwheels is sugar in space, doing cartwheels, literally doing cartwheels. And then <laughs> Stellar sure. Swinging is just sugar on a swing. <laughs> so... Mm -hmm. That's really straightforward. Uh. Yeah. Nice. Yep. And so uh, within each of these collections, right, there are like 333 editions. So you have 300 common, uh, 30 rare, and uh, three ultra rare, right? And each of these actually came with uh, the image and uh, four bars of freestyle rap, which we're going to hear a little bit right now. Wonder why everything's changed. Everybody want to say, hey. 
Funny what they do for the fame. Everybody looking for somebody to blame. Wonder why every face change. Everybody. So now, if you got one of each, like one common, one rare, and one ultra rare, right? You actually, if could... you have, if you have all three common too, like you still can get the legendary card. Really? Yeah, but you have to hold it. I think until the 14th of May, then Crypto.com would airdrop you the legendary card. Yeah. Ah, so it's to have people to just hold it and not dump it, right? Hold it. I mean, you could choose to dump it if you want to, like you know, make a quick uh. A sale on the on the yeah. on the secondary market, you know, go ahead, mm-hmm. like that's fine. But I think like it's mm-hmm. really for to give value to people who want to hold on to the art, you know. And we have utilities um, for each each different uh, rarity as well, and utilities that that we we are constantly um, dropping to, to to the holders over the next few weeks and months. Yeah, yeah, and I think what's cool is that the legendary cut it comes with like the full 16 bars of freestyle that you did right the whole song basically yeah so the whole song right now it's like these three cuts have four bars each right mm-hmm. um and with uh i think i think with the legendary it unlocks like the extra four bars and you can hear the whole song basically and uh you would basically also somewhere down the line we're, we're working on it right now but you would actually get the actual physical cut you know sent to you Basically, and you can you can uh, use an AR filter, and then you can see it pop up on 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 your on your cart. Yeah, yeah, and I think that's already on uh, on on your Instagram, right? I remember seeing that you had yeah, you were, yeah, yeah. You, were, you were showing that that thing yeah, where you yeah. had a phone, and then it, it came up as a uh, yeah. As that's a TV, only for like um, the the legendary holders, lah. Yeah. Ah right. Okay, so I'm gonna pull it up on the screen right now, so people <laughs> can see what they what you mean. Sure. Yep. So this is it, right? So this is Shiga mm-hmm. and using his phone and wow, amazing. Amazing. Yep. And yeah. that's the astronaut floating right there and yep. cosmic cartwheels. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So now who actually thought of all these um, ideas, like the idea of the 333 collection, the idea of like a legendary and even having the card, like, was this something that you thought of all on your own or did you have some? No, no, this is like definitely like, uh, it's, it's like the team's work, you know, we all work together on this, like on this project for like almost a year or more than a year Mm -hmm. now, you know, Mm -hmm. and, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, through, Basically, my 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 company, Drink Entertainment, with Wow Portos, who did the 3D mm-hmm. animations. They're from Arizona, and mm-hmm. Crypto.com, the team at Crypto.com, and the team over at Orchard as well. So mm-hmm. this was like this was like a, a team, really a team effort. You know, like uh, 10, 15 people coming to each Google Meet and like wow. going through how many you know how many cards made sense for the market right now. Because you know, for the NFT market, it changes every week. Mm-hmm. And what made sense for the holders, I think, you know, there was, there was, um, that was like one of the main things, like, how do we make it, um, special for people who are collecting the card? How do we make it worthwhile for them, you know, to, to, mm-hmm. to, to purchase the card and, and collect it? Yeah. Hmm. Nice. Nice. So that's interesting because you have a crypto company, you have drink entertainment, which is yours. Um, you have wild portals, which is the creative company. And, and what role did the orchard have to play in it? Cause we know them as, um, as a, as Distribution. a distributor, right? So, yeah. Um, so this like, is kind of like the more. first, the first music NFT project that they dropped as well. So, mm-hmm. you know, um, I, I, like I, I've been working with orchard for, for a while now, you know, and, and, uh, just to distribute music, but this was a new thing that, you know, we kind of explored together in a way. Like the creative and the art process, um, we handled that, like just drink and just wild portals, we handled that. But like, mm-hmm. I think for a lot of the, the getting it, getting it out there and like the, the, like distributing it, they were the ones that were like the brains behind it. And yeah, it was, it was, it was really a team effort lah, in, in every sense of the way. Yeah. Hmm. I see, I see. Right. So, um, to the average person who thinks about NFTs, right, I think most people would know like Bored Apes, CryptoPunk, which are mostly on Ethereum, right? right? And I know this is a unique partnership with Crypto.com, which actually I feel is really interesting because um, obviously they acquired the naming rights to 
uh, Staples, the Center. Staples Center, yeah. right? <laughs> they are um, sponsoring the FIFA World Cup, so they've been big on sports. And the yeah. cool part is that they're actually um, based here in Singapore, right? Which yeah. is amazing. Yeah, yeah, they are. I think they moved from Hong Kong to Singapore. Exactly. Yeah, that's right. That's right. So and, now, and their logo us. is Lion, also, bro. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And you are yeah. Lion City, Kia, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, Lion City. You know, Crypto Lion. Yeah, man. So, man, they all checked out. Full man. circle, all, all full circle, man. <laughs> yeah, so, so yeah. how did this happen? This collaboration, this partnership happen? I and, think and we what, were. What made you choose them as a platform to mint your first NFT? Right. I think. Um, when we already had the art and we already had the whole concept of like, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to create like a special verse f specifically for this NFT and specifically mm -hmm. exclusively for the blockchain. Right. Like mm -hmm. we were thinking of, you know, which platform that we should, um, mint it on. And mm -hmm. there's so many options out there. Right. And yeah, yeah. I think, um, crypto.com just made sense in, in every way. I think like, um from whatever whatever they they already have been doing as a platform and for me myself like i'm coming into the nft space for the first time you know mm. and um there's a lot for me to learn and and there's a lot more for me to learn as well so mm. I, I really came into this space not really um it's is you know there's a lot of like cash grabs going on right now you know people just want to mm. flip nfts for money but yeah I'm really in this for the long term and I'm, I'm really in this for um, fig I'm really trying to make as many mistakes as I can to mm. learn about how I can properly utilize this tool for me to better connect with my audience and in in in, uh, in another sense to um, have my music reach people that I could never reach before so mm. on that analogy of things crypto.com made the most sense for me in that way you know like mm. like it could help support my music it could support the nft it could um have me involved in their community as well the crow fam community and mm -hmm. and yeah just everything just kind of made sense for for this drop right right yeah but how did the how did the initial connection happen the initial connection um i th just like you know uh business talks like with all the different companies and like uh orchard kind of like you know uh like we 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 were we were talking to them and they were like talking to crypto and you know it made sense for us to kind of like do this together so it, it happened mm -hmm. that way you know wow. and and uh yeah it it, it it was it was a long process though you know mm -hmm. yeah, yeah you said over one year right over one year yeah yeah wow that's amazing man yeah Super I think many long. people see like NFTs, they think it's something you can just quickly do up and just mint on chain right. and go. But I think not many people see that actually to do it properly, it's you really a long, need to think yeah, about it. You for really sure. have to have discussions, meetings, yeah, a yeah, proper yeah. plan, right? Definitely, definitely. Like Board Ape is just not it's not just a PFP project. Like you have a mm -hmm. whole team like at Yuga Labs and yeah. you know, it's just so many layers and so many heads involved to make this yeah. possible, yeah. Right, right. So I read in one of your interviews that uh, Tony from you know, Wild Portals introduced you to NFTs, right? In late uh, 2020. Late 2020 and since yeah. then, you've been doing a lot of research on it, diving yeah, to the yeah. rabbit hole. Yeah. Like, what was your journey and that aha moment that you knew you wanted to do your own NFT collection? Um, I think when... Uh, I mean, I, I kind of like slept on it for a bit when Tony <laughs> told me about NFTs because it's like in 2020, NFTs is like what? Yeah. You know what? Yeah. What? What is that? Exactly. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and um, the learning curve is quite steep, you know, and and it can be quite daunting, like, um, because blockchain is like and crypto, the reputation of blockchain and crypto is like, you know, the quick cash kind of thing, and mm -hmm. a lot of scams going on. So yeah, it's 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 really um, some like it, I I would say the learning curve at the start is is pretty steep to navigate but like if mm. once you get over that it's like you can when you kind of see it and everything clicks i think mm. that's when you have a understanding of how you can find your voice in the space and mm. i think that uh the aha moment for me was when i you know found out how powerful utilities can be you know mm. um what utilities can actually do because like 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 um nft art is 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 
there's one one side of people who collect it based on just the art, right? Like how beautiful the mm. art is. But mm -hmm. utility can actually translate into physical things in the real world. So that 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 bridge that connects Web three to the real world is it just blew my mind because like I think that with that possibility of utilities, everything in the world, not just music, right? Like you know mm. your your property contracts, basically all your contracts in the next five years is going to be yeah. NFTs. It's yeah. basically a smart contract and mm -hmm. your cars, when you buy your cars next time, when you go to your concerts in, in the future, it's all going to yeah. be NFTs because it makes so much more sense and it gives so much more value to the audience, you know, and the consumer. So I think when I, 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 I realized like how powerful utilities were, that's when it was like, oh, wow, imagine what could be done in the, in the music world, you know, like mm. you literally you literally you can invest directly into the artists that you like and you want to support now mm. and you are you you have a part in their career like the more successful they get the more valuable your asset becomes you mm -hmm. know and you know in the past like people would get mad right when your favorite artist blew up it's like ah you know i liked him before he was famous but now it's like yeah. when your favorite artist blows up you get rich yeah so so it's it's just crazy, man. Like, and we're just on the brink of the iceberg with this, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And speaking of utility, right? I, I think um, you've got something quite interesting with your, your collection where rare NFT holders who have access to online hangouts, right? And even the ultra rare ones, they also get an audio visual shout out from you. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, and these were like utilities at the drop, but like, like I think even for the common users, like we are, uh, we have some utilities installed for them. It's, 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 I think everybody, it's like, this is built based on like community. So mm. everything that we do is basically looking at giving more value to the entire community to grow the community, you know, and it's, it's, it's mm. a long game that we're playing here. You know, we're not trying to like, like sell quick and make the money and like rock pool and get out of this game quick. Like Oops. I'm in this game for life. Cause wow. like, this is tight to my, to my, like, I'm not behind a, a PFP. I'm like, I'm, yeah. my face is out there, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so I, I'm not going anywhere. And, and, and mm -hmm. yeah, so, so utility is something that's very important to me. La. That's how I feel. Yeah. And I, I saw on your Instagram that you've also got this thing called a sugar verse coming right. up, right? And it's going right. to be on Discord. Tell us a bit more about that. So that's a Discord that uh, we, we haven't announced publicly yet. Uh, we haven't opened to public yet, but that's going to be exclusively open to our holders first. And, you know, you, they'll get all the exclusive first dips and they'll get all the um, interesting, like, participation programs inside where we'll invite them to kind of be a part of, like, uh, me and my team's music journey, you know, in a way, whether it's song creation or whether it's, like, trading lyrics or whether it's, like, making a decision on something new in the metaverse, and or a new NFT drop, like all of them, like you know, we want to give as 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 much like um, weightless um, possibilities for them as well. Like definitely everything for perks and privileges, it would be the community first, you know. And that's what mm. the Sugarverse Discord is all about. Um, taking my holders into the metaverse with me, whether it's shows or parties or whatever. Yeah. So you're saying that they can just not just be consumers, but they now can kind of help you to make decisions on like the next step forward. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, I don't want to call it a DAO, but like, yeah. you know, in a way it's, it's in, a, in a way, yeah, like I think it's a two-way street, you know, it's like I give them something and they give me feedback, they tell me and I'm listening, you know, and I'm, I'm, mm. I'm like, you know, um, I'm all in the Twitter spaces and the Discord channels, just talking to people and like getting a sense of what the community is like, what they feel, mm. you mm. know, and, and that kind of, um, it's a very interesting creative process to me. Cause like as a creator, it's like, it's given me a new tool to kind of interact with the fans, you know, mm -hmm. and it's not one way anymore. It's not like I just make music you consume and that's it. Or you yeah. come to my shows. And I think with, yeah. you know, the pandemic, right? Like it, it, it kind of like accelerated the growth of this because, yeah. Um, we're not allowed to perform, so you can't receive the energy back from the audience, right? But mm -hmm. in this mm -hmm. case, it kind of helps to, uh, it creates a channel and a way where people can, you know, uh, give and receive. That's how I feel mm -hmm. about NFTs, yeah. Yeah, okay, but how would you think this is different? So in the past, people would have purchased like a ticket to watch you, they have purchased your merch. What do you feel like is the difference between this Web3 and Web2? Um, 
it gives people it doesn't have any uh like borders you know it could be s- somewhere literally from anywhere around the world it opens up even more i feel you know it, mm. it, it um it basically creates opportunity for people who previously before web3 would never have had the opportunity to discover me yeah and yeah. i think it's also a digital identifier right because last time if i bought the sugar t-shirt right right you know, like you know it, it may not necessarily result in me being connected to you right but now right. because of this digital identifier that i have i can right. join your discord i can you know and if you're on the discord i can directly kind of get in touch with you and if you yeah. do want to get some like crowdsource voting you know i i kind of have a voice now that i'm a holder of this uh digital asset right yeah yeah exactly exactly yeah, yeah. that's amazing this- that's amazing yeah digital so identity think, exactly exactly so i think we want to go into like the guys the more spicy part of it you know which is like a lot of people are curious you know they see like um you know sugar minted like 999 nfts they do the math they see it's like 40 dollars each and it's like wow that's us forty thousand, right which when you benchmark to web 2 right uh like 1 million streams gets you four thousand uh dollars right. right on average so it's like right. 10 million streams like earned in like four minutes and people are like wow this is like amazing is this a scam is this for real (laughs) and like how is this actually like split up between the team and like you know like because there's secondary sales as well and like this kind of goes on forever so like you know like that all seems like a lot to take in so how can an artist you kind of like make sense of of this and uh especially in the economic sense i think that you know like it should be it should be structured in a way that can support your art you know in, in a way you know what i mean it, it shouldn't be something that you're thinking of like oh look how am i going to make the most money out of this because this was never the thought process behind the project itself you know this mm. this this was like it was never about like oh how do i make the most money out of this it was always mm. about like how do i build the community in the best way possible where i can give to them the most with this drop and in the long term mm. of things and if you play uh the long game if you're not trying to do it for the cash grab, then there are plenty of ways to win in Web3 for musicians mm. and artists alike, you know. There's mm. so many ways, man. And and I think that uh, individually, everyone needs to spend uh, the 20 hours to do their own research. Because, mm-hmm. I mean, you know this, Clarence, like you, you yeah. had to do all your research and read up, watch yeah. your videos, listen to your podcast to be able to get to a level of understanding where yeah. you at least knew how the mechanics of this work and if you don't understand the mechanics of the basis of how this works um you you it'll be more difficult for you to find your your voice in terms of how to navigate but if you Mm. do your due diligence and spend the hard work to go and learn and everything which i'm saying Mm. everyone can do it you just need to spend your 20 hours to go and do it to really sit down Mm. and and go and like read up and everything and Mm. um you can find your own space within the NFT space. And I think that it's mm. not about the, don't look at it as like, uh, okay, look, I'm going to sell my, my artwork for, a, for one ETH and, you know, it's going to shoot up to, to a few millions like Beepo and all that. I'm not saying it's not mm. going to happen, but if you have that expectation, then if you work backwards, it's, it's not, yeah. the, the, the intention is already wrong. Like what you're in it for is money. So mm. in a lot of sense, if you chase money, like money won't come to you. But if you, if you, mm. if you focus on the art, you focus on community building, essentially the money is going back into building the community, you know, mm. and, um, it creates a win-win situation for everyone in that sense. You know what I mean? If like, if you're thinking of more of a cash grab, then that's like a, a one way street. You're thinking of winning for yourself, but if mm. you're thinking of winning for everybody, I think that's that's the kind of mindset that that could essentially you know uh have artists win in in this web tree world yeah yeah and and it seems like it also sets you up for the long run right because you're definitely really that into the community you are definitely. developing new ways of engaging and you're pioneering new 100%, formats 100 bro 100 percent. it's like it, it, it's 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 a it's a whole ecosystem like basically this nft mm. community thing building the community it's gonna mm. help introduce new people to your your work and mm-hmm. these are people that are like your soldiers, you know, they're like out there promoting your stuff and like, yeah. because, because it also incentivizes them when your value goes up. So if you keep building your music and your craft and you keep getting better, you keep creating more content that's valuable to these people, 
Mm. It's only going to grow bigger and bigger and bigger. And and you know, if you if things grow bigger, it gets it gets more exciting. And obviously, there will be more money. But money mm. should not be the main goal in this in this uh, in this world. I feel, yeah. Hmm. Yeah. That's a great. That's a great insight. That's a really, really great one. Just looking beyond, right? The the Definitely. cash of it and seeing beyond, seeing the longer term. Now, yeah, for yeah. people who are interested in like who are hearing this and interested in how to like take the next step, and you talk about the twenty hours and diving in, like what are some like of the places that you went to to get that twenty hours that you think could be useful for some of the aspiring artists or even fans who are just really inspired by this interview? Hmm. So it's like. It can be very daunting, right? You know, with the NFT lingos and and this this yeah. NFT space, like one week feels like one year, right? So, mm-hmm. I think it's 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 uh first of all, you got to switch your mindset to like it's not gonna be like you sit down for a few days and you learn everything. You know, this is a learning journey that it probably will never end. You know, you really mm-hmm. have to like kind of get into a learner's mentality where you just dive into youtube dive into your podcast i think uh honestly speaking gary v has some really good podcasts and videos mm-hmm. about the web3 space and how like artists can win in the long term in the web3 space definitely go check mm-hmm. him out um mm-hmm. there's a lot a lot of like nft um uh youtube channels right now that are popping up left right and center you know mm-hmm. just google like google like everything is on google once you search like um yeah. nft how do i start or how do i and yeah nft for beginners even you know do mm. youtube that google that go into twitter you know look at the nft hashtags read all the as much as you can read how people are feeling read on both sides you know there are people like shitting on nfts read their perspective on it there are people that are like mm. shilling their projects read all of that and you kind of get a sense of like what the world is about you know, mm. in terms of like uh nft land you know mm. and I guess along the way of doing your own research, you might stumble upon like a few projects that you might be interested in. And mm-hmm. when you have that, when you can relate to a project and you have genuine interest in the project, go and dig mm-hmm. deep, you know, go and look mm-hmm. for who their founders are, go and look at who the team is behind this, you know, mm-hmm. what is like, like beyond the roadmap, you know, the roadmap is just essentially a deck, a pitch deck, right? Mm-hmm. But if you look mm-hmm. at the founder, you look at their history, you look at the way they navigate it in Web 2 maybe and how they're doing mm-hmm. in Web 3, it gives you a longer um, perspective on mm. where the project is going, you know, and whether you want to put your your money's worth to support the project. Because when you mm. buy an NFT, technically, you know, you're you're the advertiser for the NFT now. You're going to tell everyone about it. You know, you're mm. going to change it. But when it's a PFP project, people change it yeah. to their profile pictures so that, yeah. like, they tell people it's like virtual signaling, right? You know, so yeah, do your own research and um, and um have fun learning uh, that's that's all i can say you know yeah yeah really yeah, i think fun is important right i mean yeah yeah this, it, it, if it becomes something that becomes too stressful i guess sometimes yeah. it loses the yeah. point right because yeah this is something that's meant to help to increase the connection between yeah, like, yeah. artists and fans right definitely but i do admit that the, the the initial learning curve is 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 definitely steep but i think that um look at the bigger picture and look at the long-term goal. And, and I think that once you get past that, you're going to see a whole new rainbow land of like NFT world that would, you know, um, help you find your space in Web3. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. So something we always ask in the closing segment of the show is, um, what are some of the personal projects that you yourself are looking at? It could be beyond... Um, space bars like what are some projects could be outside of uh music but even in think, NFTs, web3 that you are looking at um i think that v friends is 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 a i mean it's one of the top projects right it's definitely a very mm-hmm. interesting project because it gives you tickets to vcon and a whole bunch of utilities that like gary v has like essentially hacked the game <laughs> of web3 and nft yeah. you know he he's a visionary you know that guy's crazy yeah. Um, this, this, this NFT called Beat Hits NFT. This is a music NFT by Allo Black. Um, the, the, the guy that sang, I need a dollar, dollar, dollar is what I need. Yeah. That his project, um, that one's really interesting. I think that that gives you an opportunity to kind of participate in the music creation of things. And, and, uh, actually I think a part of their proceeds are going to, um, like 
uh, a music, uh, the music community to help to help people learn about music or something as I like go into charity. So mm. Beat Hits is a really interesting project. Um, yeah, I, there's so many projects right now, right? You know, uh, but what about you, Clarence? Like, like what, what, are there any projects you're looking at? Oh, wow. <laughs> That's an interesting one. So um, I have, uh, actually the past few days has been really busy. I've been sleeping at like 2 a.m., waking up at 6 a.m. just for mints. Last night I woke up at 4 a.m. to try to mint RAC's um, uh, music collection on Sound XYZ. And, uh, Did you get it? Unfortunately, even though I had, I'm pretty sure I had the fastest fingers out there. Right, I was like right. camping. And once, you said, once the button came out, I was already clicking it. <laughs> I, used, I used my hot wallet so I didn't need to. To, to enter my ledger uh, password or anything. And right, I'm pretty right, sure right, I, right, I right. went through the capture really fast, but I still missed <laughs> out. Yeah, and um, yeah, so I, I've been quite um, kind of excited about uh, music NFTs. So right. um, um, I started collecting um, on uh, Sound XYZ, which basically, um, you know, an artist like, like yourself, you know, you release a full track and it kind of um, has uh, it's a collection. So there are different editions that I guess are dependent on the level of the artist. So they could be something like a 25 piece or a 100 piece. So I managed to mint uh, Toki Monsters um, latest uh, first NFT. Uh, just oh, two days ago, nice. yeah, I was I was like the third backer of the project. So if you log in, they have this um they have this uh kind of leader. You are gonna to check that out, man. Leader. Sound X Y Z. Yeah, sound X Y Z. So I I I, I minted that. Uh, so if you go on the Toki Monster one, um, you, you can you can. Uh, see. Okay, okay, I'll definitely just, check that out. Bring the screen share up, and then we can go through it together. Yeah. Okay. So. Uh, yeah, this is it. Is so it basically, love like by every you? day. Love by you. Sorry. Is it called Love yeah, by that's You? Yeah, that's right, that's right. So I managed to, I managed wow. to get that. Um, so you can see. Uh, so that's that's quite cool. So she released this on her streaming platforms, um, but it's also um, on, as an NFT, and she got like 10 ETH in like uh, 10 seconds, basically. Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so if you see, uh, this is me right here. Yeah, so Clara Crypto. So that's my, that's my... Uh, Monica, nice. uh, crypto Monica. Yeah, where I follow all like the music nice. projects. So, yeah, I've been a fan well, of what's hers that PFP for a long time. You, she, what's the PFP that you oh, have? This is um, this is Galactic Punks. It's the first NFT on the Terra blockchain. Wow. Okay, I gotta check yeah. that out too. So I, I I'm kind of bullish on Terra. I think they've got a really um, interesting perspective, which is that uh, decentralized um, right a decentralized world needs decentralized money. So they basically built this algorithmic stable coin called UST, uh, which is um, uh, basically maintained by a token, uh, which goes by Luna. So um, uh, I think it's really interesting because they're really laser focused on creating that decentralized currency. And the more that is used, uh, the more Luna is burnt. And the more Luna is burnt, the less is the supply. And when the lesser supply, it's... Uh, the price goes up. So I think it's a very sound um, kind of uh, methodology and ecosystem as well. And so the Galactic Punks is like the first NFT that actually minted on the Terra blockchain. Nice. Yeah. So nice. Um, it, it, it's quite cool. So now they've even got like uh, the Galactic Grids where you can uh, have an address. And then in the future, you'll be able to have like a, a metaverse space, you know, where you can display all your um, NFTs within the Terra uh, uh, blockchain on, on there. And uh, now you can even stake it. And when you stake your um, Galactic Punk, right, you freeze it. They call it, you freeze it in a cryptogenic chamber. So it's got this whole space kind of thing. And when you stake it, what they do is that uh, the, they have a DAO, which is, has been investing in a lot of projects and um, they get all these tokens in return. So what they do is that they will monetize these tokens and distribute that to the people who staked it uh, in accordance to how many punks you stake. Wow. Yeah, so wow. it's really, really interesting because now the NFT, like what you said, right? What's the utility? So uh, physical utility is one, but how about DeFi utility? I think that's right. another way, like decentralized finance Definitely. utility. Yeah, so I think like projects like that, you know, they're kind of pioneering uh, something new. Yeah, and uh, the other project that I minted recently was um, this thing. It's really new. Uh, it's their second project. Um, it's called Beat Foundry. So what is interesting mm. was um, these are... Uh, generative pieces. So um, f uh, if I'm correct, what it means is like they have these different parts and it's kind of put together by a code. Yeah. So they work with an artist like Oshi. So Oshi is like a one of the 
OGs in uh, music uh, web3 yeah so mm. he's um he's he's been around for a while and some of his collections um are going like for upwards of like 8 ETH and above um per NFT yeah so uh he, he um uh he's done this collaboration so you can listen to it it's um So you can own like the the song. Yeah. So so this right is all kind of um, algorithmically done, put together. Yeah, and they have oh. different. Uh, each track has a different uh, kind of combination. Mm. And and I mean, like buying the NFT, do you get like do you get to use the song or or, or how does it work? What is the utility? Uh, no, you this? don't. You don't get to use the song. You basically just uh, get a collection. Right. Yeah, you just basically collect this, and um, they have. Uh, of course, there are a few rare ones in the mix um, as well. But I think this is kind of a quite a groundbreaking project, and. Mm. Um, it's they call it a MIDI generative uh, NFT. So there's also a, 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 like a, a MIDI aspect to this, where um, I think it's minted on chain as well. So um, uh, I think if you are looking for like the MIDI uh, notes, yeah, that's available as well for the collector. Cool. Yeah, so I'll definitely be checking this out is, these uh, projects. This man. is really, really interesting. Yeah, you, you should check this out. So they, they kind of uh, in their FAQ they kind of describe a bit more about about it. Yeah, so it's uh, see generative uh, entirely on chain generative music NFTs. So um, they uh, use like melodies, drum parts, interludes, and it's released in a MIDI format. Mm. Yeah. yeah. So you can anyone can add their own creative vision to the music through remixing, instrumenting, and producing. Each NFT comes with the artist's full produced interpretation of the piece, so that anyone can listen to the NFT despite their ability to produce a song. Yeah. So I guess like Shiga, for you, if you purchase this, you can probably make use of the MIDI and like create something with it. Ah. Oh, yeah. So you see, they upload the MIDI files to the Ethereum blockchain. This is really cool, man. This yeah, is really this, cool. This is really cool, yeah. So, um, this is their, just their second collection and it's really new. I was just in the Discord uh, a couple of nights ago. Still a really uh, tight-knit group of people. Uh, so, I think it's amazing what this uh, team is doing and um, the people that built, I think the user interface and uh, the art um, is also uh, really, really interesting. So, it's done by um, this guy called Adam Ho, uh, who's worked on projects like uh, Coinbase, uh, Airbnb. Mm. Yeah, and um, it's this bunch of creatives. Um, they go by this uh, Vector DAO. So, Vector DAO is um, a bunch of. Uh, really you, have a, you have a DAO that you. The, the Great Wave, right? That's, that's your DAO, right? Yeah, that's right. That's right. Correct. So, the Great Wave is also something that's quite interesting. Um, yeah, so, this is Vector DAO, the guys who did the. Um, visuals for um uh beat found the ui for beat foundry and also um the album mm. cover so they've uh, worked on quite a lot of uh, very interesting web3 projects like soland uh on solana and uh solana's yeah, going I mean, crazy right solana's going crazy man i <laughs> yeah i'm quite bullish on um, on solana i was recently at the solana hacker house in singapore Oh. Yeah, and it was uh, really awesome uh, to see like the community, and you'd be surprised how many um, influential people in the Solana community are actually in Singapore. Right, uh, like Solana FM, they are this bunch of guys that are just like second year uni students, but they are uh -huh. creating like data analytics that the Solana community is depending on. And I recently heard they wow. stopped schooling just to focus on this full time. Um, wow, and you've got um, uh, yeah, others like uh, some in influencers. Um, uh, in the Solana space, in the NFT space, like one of the founders of Monkey Dow, um, uh -huh. you know, is uh, is also in Singapore. Yeah, and uh, you know, I got to meet people like him. Singapore, uh, man, it's the place yeah, man, to you'd be, be surprised, man. man. Yeah, <laughs> you'd be surprised. I want a Solana's top collection. So, uh, you know, Monkey uh, Dow. Yeah. A lot of the uh, a lot of the Solana gods in Singapore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah right so it's interesting you know all these people are here and it's uh, sometimes a matter of like connecting with them and uh you know just um 
reaching out to them and just crossing ideas. And yeah, I mean, you, you brought up the Great Wave. That's something really interesting as well. So uh, it's already got, uh, we've already got the liquidity pool already, uh, already live, you know, and um, uh, this, the whole idea behind this is that um, we use DeFi to basically help to build up a, li a liquidity pool or a pool of, of monies that we can use to fund an artist's creative vision. So in the past, if like a label wasn't backing you or you felt like you didn't have the funds to create work, um, yeah, you can approach um, the Great Wave DAO. So we basically have um, this token called a Wave Token, which can be um, pulled together with uh, ACS and BNB. So three tokens just to give it more stability. Um, and uh, you, you get to put it in um, in this pool and mint a TGW LP token. So this basically is like a stake in the DAO, or you can think of it in a tra traditional share sense, like a share certificate. So um, as we fund these artistic work, uh, part of the royalties, um, part of the music NFTs that we create, um, that value will flow back into um, into the liquidity pool. And um, you know, as our pool grows, uh, so does the value for our holders as well. So if mm. you have a TGW, you know, um, that, that value grows as well. So you basically don't have to depend on only the success of one artist, but because we are going to be helping to fuel the projects of many different artists, right? So it's about a total pool and um, TGW is here to use DeFi to really make um, new dreams come true. Nice. I like that. Yeah. It's a good tagline, man. Really? <laughs> yeah. All right, coming from a rapper, I I, I think that. <laughs> yeah. Nice man. Nice. Nice, nice man. So um, yeah, awesome cool. man. Thanks for your time, man. Yeah, thanks for your time too, man. Great speaking with you, man. I believe yeah, we'll be great. speaking a lot more about the Web three space in time to come as well. Yeah, let let's uh, let's do that. So uh, yeah. once again, uh, Shiga's got his um, NFT. It's still available for those who didn't get it. Uh, yeah. it's, uh, Wait, when when is this when is this dropping? Wait, which one? This 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 episode when is it dropping? Oh, this is gonna be dropping probably next week. Which which like do you know which date? Do, do, do uh, you know we can we can time it if you like. Right right right. I mean because I'm dropping my EP on twenty first of April. So That's I what I heard. I heard you were gonna drop an EP after the the NFT drop. Right. Yeah yeah yeah. Do, so I'm dropping. I mean, I don't know. Like, d d d depends on like I guess you know. Um, but yeah, whatever it is, I'm dropping an <laughs> EP. Yeah, I'm dropping an EP. I just don't want to mention dates because in case, you know, you release it after or whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, but we can work it out. We'll work it out if, if you know, if we can help to time it such that it's 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 um a good lead up for your EP. Sure, man. sure, sure. Yeah. Sure. Appreciate so, you, bro. Thank you, bro. We're just going to end with a song just to close out for those of you who just join in and it's a chance to hear Shiga. This is Reason Why. <laughs> Thank you, man. Appreciate you, bro. I always looking for a reason why. Blowing up my phone, get no reply. I'm sorry, but I can't be telling lies. Why, why, why you kill my vibe? I ain't got no reason why. Alright, bro. Every hello See you soon, man. Thank you, bro. Gotta stay Please, loyal till I die On the islands where I wanna be 